Okay, so welcome to this uh, video describing the updates that I've made to the task tracker spreadsheet. I'll assume in this video that um, you've watched the original uh, explanation video for how the task tracker works, and I won't repeat the description of the basic operation of the spreadsheet. Um, there's a link in the description to that previous video, and if you haven't already seen it, I would encourage you to um, watch it first um, in order for this video to make more sense. So for people who have watched the previous video, you'll notice that one of the major updates to the task tracker spreadsheet is uh, the look and feel is a bit different. Um, the task creation zone in the top now has this blue zone around it, and um, the tasks not yet commenced are listed in this green box, and then there are orange, an orange area for the tasks underway and a purple area at the bottom for the completed tasks. Also, the control buttons to move tasks around are now in a row at the top, which is frozen. And um, that's basically an overview of the look and feel changes that have been made. Another change that I made was that I removed all reference to lawyers because um, based on the YouTube comments and emails that I've received, a number of non-lawyers use it. So you'll see that the spreadsheet now refers to assignors and to assistants, and there's no reference anywhere to lawyers. Um, you will notice that the um, number of assignors is increased and is now 10. And also, if you look at the file list for each um, assignor, there's an increased number of um, files that uh, can be entered on the file list tab. Some people were saying that they um, ran out of space, so I added more space. And of course, there are now 10 tabs for file lists because there are 10 different assignors. The number of assistants um, is now five and uh, the other changes are um, I've added for example this text up here which says that you must not um, interfere with any of the cells that have triple exclamation marks at the end because those are used for um, navigation by the macros um, and if you change any of those cells then the macro will get confused. A lot of people uh, have emailed me saying their spreadsheet is broken because they didn't, uh, I guess, pay attention to the comment to this effect in the last video. So I just repeated and indeed added that red text in there as well. Um, another change is that I've added um, some additional columns over um, here in the orange zone. So the date the task is created was there before, um, but I've also got a date started column and then a date ended column. So that um, provides a bit more information about uh, how long tasks took in case that data um, is of interest to people for um, sort of audit and review of um, productivity and things like that. So I'll go ahead and uh, create a new task, and in doing so, we'll demonstrate some of the additional uh, new features that have been added. So um, for a description of the new task, um, I'm still gonna use somewhat lawyer-specific tasks because those are the ones that come easily to mind. Um, so file pleading will be the name of the task. We'll assume it's a task for Jane. So assume I'm Jane right now when I'm creating this task. Um, it's on her file number four. Then over here, um, there's a new drop-down list uh, which allows the person to um, save sending the task automatically to the bottom of the green list and then having to use the up-down buttons or the two top and two bottom buttons to move it to the top of the task list. But instead they can predetermine where they want it to rank within the green list. Um, there's only a limited number of positions they can pick. They can either pick one, two, three, or default send it to the bottom. So let's assume that the file pleading task on file number four needs to go to position two. In other words, Jane says, fine, the Mary task um, can go first, but my task, let's say it's only a point one and it's urgent, so I um, want it to be done fairly soon and not wait all the way at the bottom of the list. Another feature is if um, Jane wants to know which of the tasks um, that have been completed, she wants to be especially sure that they've completed. Sometimes it happened that the um, this zone, this purple zone got really long and there were hundreds of tasks that were completed. Some of them, the delegator has no interest in ever knowing about again. They put it on the task list and they expect that um, if the matter is moved down to the purple, it's done and that's the end of it. But sometimes the delegator might be concerned to come back and check that especially important tasks have been completed. So um, I've added a tagging feature that you just click this tag button over here and then when you go ahead and create the task, it'll create a tag much like this one over here. 
So um, to create a task and move from the blue to green, you click the blue to green button up here and it'll go ahead and create it. So there it is now in position number two, it's got Jane file pleading on Jane big file number four and it's got a Jane tag. So um, if we move it down to the orange, so this of course would be the assistant doing it. The assistant wants to move it from green to orange. They click the green to orange button. They then pick their name, click proceed. And now it's down in the orange zone. And you can also see it's been assigned. The assistant's name is there and the date and time the task was started is shown. Once the task is completed, then the assistant would uh, select that task, click the orange to purple button, enter the time that it actually took to do the task. Again, this is feedback so lawyers or delegators can become better informed about how long things take. And um, we'll now see that the task is down in the bottom of the, um, the, the bottom zone where tasks are completed. So another feature of the tag button is once Jane comes along, she sees that the um, task is down at the bottom. She says, that's good, she can untag it. So this gray button up here can be used to tag and untag. So um, the intention is just that someone can tag the tasks that are especially important that they wanna come back and, and look at them later on. And um, as well, they can look at this zone over here. So whoever is the task delegator selected in this drop down list their name will show over here right now it's mary we can change it to a6 and then it'll tell you how many tags you've got in all of the zones that'd be the green zone the orange zone and the purple zone so um hypothetical person a6 has zero right now jane has one if we untag this particular task then jane will have zero the goal should be for most of the time all delegators have zero tasks tagged. There should generally be very few tasks tagged. And every time the delegator comes back to the spreadsheet, maybe to put a new task on the spreadsheet, they should go through and look at their tagged ones, figure out if they are satisfied that nothing more needs to be done, um, or uh, for whatever reason, they should deal with the tags and untag things and generally set them to zero. So the tagging is basically just if uh, the delegator wants to do further steps after the initial task is completed by the assistant, then the delegator can come back and get an idea of when the task is completed. Of course, they could just browse the completed task section, but if there are many tasks there, it can be a little bit um, inconvenient to find the one you're looking for and the tags can be helpful for that purpose. Um, and then in terms of tagging, um, obviously uh, these names over here in the assignals list are hypothetical, but if we wanted to put in a more realistic name uh, like Mike, then of course uh, this name over here, Mike would show up in the assignals list. And also um, if you then wanted to tag a task, uh, assuming for example, this was actually a Mike task, then if you tag and untag, it's gonna bring in the name that is shown up on the assignals list. Um, well, it, sorry, should I say it brings in the color that's up on the assignals list. So when you tag and untag, it searches in this column over here for who the creator of the task is, goes up to this list over here and then pulls out the color um, of the cell. So as well, if you wanna change the background color of the cell, so for example, Mike decides he doesn't like blue and instead wants um, red, which is uh, a bit bright, but anyway, then when you tag and untag, it's gonna change and it's gonna be red. So there is some flexibility in what colors you wanna pick. And of course you can type in the names of the assignors and then Mike's assignor number five. So of course that's also gonna show up on file list number five. It's got Mike's name up there. Um, one other minor change that I'll mention is the refresh button up in the top left corner over here. Um, keeping in mind this is a shared workbook, so it can be simultaneously edited by multiple people at the same time. But if an assistant, for example, has the spreadsheet open, um, a delegator or a number of delegators in the background are making changes, for example, moving things down to the green, adding new tasks. If the assistant wants to um, know if things have changed since he or she last looked at the list, then um, he or she can just click the refresh button. It takes a little while to think about it, but basically if another user has made changes, um, there'll be some flickering, but basically the screen will update and it'll tell the assistant what the latest um, um, situation is. Also a delegator might click the refresh button to see if an assistant has since moved tasks down to the orange or maybe even down to the, the purple area. 
Okay, so I think that's pretty much it for an overview of the updated task tracker spreadsheet. You can follow the link in the description to the Legal Tree page where you can download a updated version. Um, again, I hope it works well for you, but of course uh, you use it at your own risk. And um, yeah, hope it uh, works out well. Thanks. Bye.